In this video, we're going to talk about in this video, we're going to talk about the best interest of the child standard in Indiana divorce and custody cases. In all custody cases, the court looks to the best interest of the child when making decisions. We're going to talk about what the courts specifically look at and how you can prepare for this kind of argument. So about me, my name is Nathan Vining. I'm a family law attorney here in Indiana, and I represent people in divorce and custody cases across the state. And hopefully by the end of this video, you know a bit more about how you can prepare a best interest argument in your case. So in custody cases, and custody case can be a paternity case or a divorce case, uh, the law is centered around the best interest of the child standard. And this essentially weighs factors like the emotional bonds, a parent's caregiving abilities, as well as a child's adjustment to the community. And the courts will weigh those things when determining child custody. So we're going to look at what those specific factors are, and they're outlined in Indiana Code. It's specifically 3117.28, and this sets out the key factors that a court looks to when they are determining a child custody case. So one of the first things a court would look at is the age and the sex of the child. This can play into a case a lot of ways. A lot of times the court would have their father seeing the child three days a week rather than longer extended time periods. So both parents are seeing the child on a more frequent basis. So the age, of, age and sex of the child plays into a custody decision. A lot of times the court will look to and weigh the wishes of the parents. Um, they may have specific wishes and desires that the court should take into account. Other times, if the child is specifically is 14 years of age or older, the court will weigh the wishes of the child. Uh, the court will look at the parents' interactions with the child. So for instance, if a non-custodial parent's moving for more parenting time or they're trying to modify custody, they're gonna look at have you been involved in school and healthcare decisions? Uh, what exactly is your bond with the child? They're gonna look at the child's adjustment to uh, the school community, things like that. A lot of times uh, parents live close to each other, it's easier to get a joint custody order rather than if they're several hours apart. You have the courts will look at the child's adjustment to each parent's home. They're going to look at the mental health, mental and physical health of the parties. For instance, if one parent maybe have medical issues that prevent them from caring for a child, that would be a factor that would be weighed. They're going to also going to look at the physical health of the child. Uh, maybe the child has special needs that can be met in one parent's home more so versus the others. They're going to look at uh, patterns or history of domestic violence. And then also they could look to whether or not you have left the child in the care of a third party. Um, so there's a lot of factors that go into uh, determining the best interest. These are what those are. So a lot of times in a custody case, what I would do is I would uh, talk with my client and look at each of these factors and determine how they play into the situation. So for instance, a lot of times uh, the wishes of the parents would be competing. They may want different and opposite things, so that would be neutral. Uh, sometimes the wishes of the child may not come to play because of the child's age. So what we would really be looking at is like the child's adjustment to your home, to the community. So I'd talk about how your home is set up for the child, how close you are to the school, uh, what amenities are in the area. I'd also talk about uh, the child's connection with your family. Do they have friends in the neighborhood? Uh, things like that. So I'd look at the child's adjustment. I'd also talk about the health of the parties. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you would look to. Um, this is just a brief uh, overview of what those key factors are when you're looking at best interest. It's also uh, important to know um, there's a lot of different factors in custody. For instance, there's legal custody and physical custody. Uh, legal custody is the decision making for the child. So um, just things such as church, school, medical decisions, that's legal custody. Uh, physical custody is um, where the child lives most of the time. And you hear a lot, uh, a lot of clients come in and say, I want full custody, uh, but it's actually, it's a lot more complicated than that because uh, are you talking about legal custody? You're talking about physical custody. And then there's also um, joint custody arranger where maybe the child spends equal time in each house. So um, that would be a week on week off or uh, split weeks where the child spends equal amounts of time in both parents' homes. So there's a lot of different ways that custody can be arranged and it's really um, about what's in the best interest of the child and what works in your situation. So if I was in a custody case, there's a lot of uh, different things I would do. You would want to uh, demonstrate um, your fitness to parent. You talk about you've been a positive role model and exhibited positive parenting. And then you'd want to display uh, active involvement in the child's life. So um, typically, if I'm working with a non-custodial parent, we're going to want to talk about um, school. Are you active in school? Uh, do you know what's going on with the child from a medical standpoint? What are you doing daily? How do you make your parenting time productive? What do you do for discipline of your child. Um, what are the things that you and your ex agree on? What do you not agree on? Um, we're going to dive into those things to determine how to best present your case. Uh, but ultimately, if you um, look at kind of these three
three areas. Those are three big areas of opportunity where you can uh, build a case around and uh, show maybe why there should be a custody change in your situation. Uh, so if you have an upcoming custody hearing, there's a few things to prepare for. First, you wanna think through uh, witness testimony. Who do you need to support your custody petition? Um, is it gonna be a testimony from you, your ex, relatives? Is there a therapist that could be a, a key witness in your case? You're gonna to wanna to think about what the judge is gonna to wanna to hear. So the judge is gonna to wanna to understand uh, your home makeup, who's involved in your life and is around the child while they're with you. Um, you're gonna to wanna to think about uh, things like how does your work schedule play into the custody range? Uh, for instance, if you are working second or third shifts and you're not around overnight, uh, you're gonna to wanna to be prepared to address that and who is taking the child while you're working. Um, you're also gonna to wanna to think about things from a documentation standpoint. Uh, do you need to get the child's report cards together, medical records, uh, things like that. So ultimately, what documents are there that you have that can help tell a story around those custody factors that we just went over? So kind of what I would be thinking about if I was preparing for a custody hearing here in Indiana. It's also important to know that the child can play a role in custody cases. Uh, typically, that doesn't mean the child is brought in and into court and, and takes the witness stand. It's nothing like that. Um, but there are things known as in-camera interviews where the child comes in and talks to the judge in chambers. Uh, the other way a child gets involved is through a guardian ad litem. And a guardian ad litem is a third party that represents the child's interest in the proceedings. And they have a pretty broad role where they can go uh, talk to teachers, talk to therapists, meet with the child, meet with the families, meet with relatives, and gather all this information to make a recommendation to the court as to what they believe is in the best interest of the child. Um, so the child can play a big role in custody proceedings. Uh, whether or not I recommend a guardian ad litem in every case is dependent upon the specific case, uh, but they can be a very useful, important tool in a contested custody pursuit. So if you have questions and you're facing a custody case, feel free to give me a call or text. I'd be happy to uh, talk about the facts that are present in your situation and see what I would recommend.